Welcome to Intentionality with Dominique, the show that helps business owners become valued and in-demand suppliers in the marketplace to scale their businesses. Let's start today's show with host and intentional connector, Dominique Simpson-Milton. Welcome to another episode of Intentionality, the show dedicated to improving the success rate of entrepreneurs and their businesses by helping them become successful suppliers. I am your host, Dominique Simpson-Milton. Today's show is being brought to you by CVMSDC, also known as the Council. We are an economic growth engine for ethnic minority business owners and serve as an advocacy group to help minority business enterprises with certification, development, connection, and advocacy. Just like cars need a tune-up, businesses need tune-ups. This involves the act of slowing down to speed up and making it a part of your annual business plan to take the time to pause and think about your growth plan. At CVMSTC, one of the main pillars of our work is development. As a business owner, you will make an investment to get certified, but in return, we invest thousands of dollars into your development. Today, I'm pleased to introduce to you Richard Coughlin from the University of Richmond, who is here to talk about the executive program designed specifically for minority business owners. Richard, welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Dominique. It's a pleasure to be here. Yes, absolutely. So tell our viewers about the University of Richmond Development Program, because we've been working together for 15 years, sure. right? Yes. Tell them about the program and why it was designed. What's the history of the program? You bet. Uh, it was really born in a van in 2008. I was participating in the Chamber RVA event. Uh, the event attracted about 100 business leaders from Richmond, and we were going to various parts of the region to explore what was going on. They put us in 15 passenger vans. Uh -huh. uh, I saw an empty seat uh, and sat down, introduced myself, and it happened to be Tracy Jeter, who oh, was yes. in the seat next to me. Of course, she's the she at the time was leading the VMSDC. Right. She, I did not know her. I did not know about the council at that time, but she she was very patient with me and, and answered a ton of questions. And then she said, I've got a proposal for you. I've got an idea that I'd like to run by you. That idea, which she'd been working with for a couple of years, was to bring people together, minority business owners, and have them educated for uh, roughly a week by our faculty. Uh, and the sponsorships were already really built uh, mm -hmm. through the relationships that Tracy had, and that's really how it started. It took about 12 months of planning. Sure. Corporate partners, including Altria, Dominion, Weed West Waco at the time, Capital One was involved as well, gathered. We would gather with them uh, every month or two and talk about what kind of curriculum would be most impactful. So these big firms wanted right. the suppliers to develop and uh, we were happy to be a part of that. And that's critical because they support the program still to this day. So 15 years, how many people have you graduated? Over 200 going on 250. Wow, so every year you assemble 18 to 20 students in a session and how long is the session? We, uh, they all arrive on Sunday evening, uh -huh. have dinner together and then we educate them all day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday. And then Friday, uh, we're with them for the morning and they depart. Okay. So why is it important for a business owner? Because, you know, these business owners, they, they, think, they can't think about closing down their businesses for a week. Why is it important for them to shut down, put somebody else in charge, and really attend this program? Well, I think there are a couple of benefits from it. First, they're going to learn uh, from our faculty some of the best practices that are going on, not only among small businesses, but how can we share some of what we're, we're seeing and hearing from, from other businesses, some mid-sized businesses, and maybe they aspire to, to grow that way. I think the second part of it, though, really has to do with the group that is gathered uh, mm -hmm. together. So they're mm -hmm. able to meet and learn from other business owners. And so the, the conversations that go on inside the classroom and outside the classroom yes become a really crucial piece for them to, to accelerate the growth of their businesses. Yeah, I'm not in my head because I was in the second class, you right? You sure were. And, you know, so that was a long time ago. But at that <laughs> point, I was in MBE and our business was it was at a pivotal point And we were trying to decide, you know, how are we going to how are we going to survive, really? Right. And coming to that program, investing that time really helped us to turn the corner and grow our business. And we since sold it, but it was just very important to us. And then we maintain contact with the cohort that we we had there. And that really warms our heart to hear those kinds of things. First, mm -hmm. I would say that the situation you found yourself in is one that's very typical among right. attendees. It's, you know, we're just not growing as fast as, as we wish, or we've grown so fast and now we need to figure out whether we've got the right structure for the next bit of growth. 
So I think these business owners often have a, a thought that pausing to look at the business mm -hmm. would be helpful. And then the council provides that opportunity and we're thrilled to be a part of that. Yeah, absolutely. We pay for them to be there. We pay for their meals, we pay for their hotel. So it's a no brainer, right? As long as you can find somebody to cover your business for that time. That's right? exactly right. And that's the key, being able to focus for that week. Well, we insist on it and yes. you insist on it as well. What I would say is I'm confident that our faculty are gonna deliver engaging conversations each and every time that they're together. And the spirit of the class is such that once they come to understand the, the seriousness of it and the value that they can get out of it, they tend to dive into that as well. Yeah, so let's talk about the curriculum. You bet. Right? So what classes will they expect to go over? So if you think about four and a half days, we, we think about it like nine half days, mm -hmm. and we devote two of those to, to strategic planning. Uh, okay. That's really at the core of what we want them to be able to leave with is a, a tangible strategic sure. plan for uh, action steps. So two of those nine half days are strategy. Two of them are on finance, and mm -hmm. that's really understanding you know, the drivers of, of revenue in the business, but also taking a look at the cost side of the business, mm -hmm. and perhaps improvements can be made there. Let's pause there for yeah, a minute, because sure. the finance is important, right? Yep. A lot of people, they don't want to get involved in the numbers. <laughs> but the professor that you have for finance, what's his name? Marshall Geiger. Marshall Geiger. I mean, he breaks it down to the most <laughs> common element, and he makes finance fun, right? So people leave, and they're like, I never thought about my numbers that way. He's got a gift, and we're fortunate to have him at Richmond. He's been there quite a long time in the Robin School of Business. But, but yeah, I mean, I think part of what he wants to be able to do is, is help you have that conversation with your accountant. Right. Have you have that conversation with your banker and uh, boiling it down in the way that he does, knowing that the audience is going to have varying levels of, of, of maybe competence and interest in right. the topic. That's really been his gift, and we're, we're fortunate to have him. Well, so he gets two half days. He gets two half days. Well, I like the way you said it because... We're not trying to teach you how to be an accountant, but we're trying to teach you the questions that you need to ask your accountant so that you can be knowledgeable when something is out of line. And now you've hit on something that really drives the way we, we develop these, these courses. I think at the core of it, we, we want these business owners to be critical thinkers yes. across the business. Just, mm -hmm. you know, what are the questions that you might pose? Can we help you think about your business in a slightly different way? Mm -hmm. And that tends to spur additional thinking. So we do the same thing in marketing, which mm -hmm. gets a half day. Same thing with leadership uh, mm -hmm. topics, which are uh, one afternoon uh, around leadership. And then we have courses on communication. Okay. Related to that is a, a probably the favorite half day, the one on negotiation. Negotiations, uh, that was my favorite, uh, yeah. And then uh, the last one that I want to mention is one that really came out of conversations we've been having, you and mm -hmm. I, over the last couple of years, and that's this one on sustainability. Right. And it's an example of how different the program is today than it was when it was launched in 2009. Each and every year, we take a hard look at the curriculum. We uh, ask, ask for feedback from mm -hmm. the participants. Some years, we don't make any changes, uh, maybe small tweaks. Sure. And some, we trade out a half day for a new half day. And sustainability, I think, is one of those examples over the last couple of years. We know that the large corporations are focused on it. Mm -hmm. I think small business owners are still wondering, what's, what's my role in this conversation? What, what is ESG, yeah, right? Yeah, right. precisely. Mm -hmm. And so what we want to, again, educate them to do is to say, look, there are probably some small things you can think about in your business. Mm -hmm. But we also want to help you understand the conversations that are going on among these Fortune 500 companies that you aim to serve. Know that each and every time they're uh, touching base with you about the possibility of partnering, mm -hmm. this is something that's on their mind. So that's how we try to educate them. Well, that's my favorite about, part about the program is that we sit down and we plan out. We pick the professors. We pick the content each year, right? So there's always relevant, right? So what we taught, like you just said, 15 years ago is not what we're teaching today. And environmental social governance, which is ESG, you know, came up from one of our corporate partners and says, you need to be teaching this. They need to understand how to come to us and how to bid on proposals with this proper language. And you quickly pivoted and then included that curriculum. Here's why we're able to do that, I would say, and this goes to the selection of professors. So first and foremost, uh, I'm dealt a very good hand because uh -huh. the Robin School of Business has a very selective process for identifying professors. So I'm picking from already uh, among the best professors in the country. We're a top business school in the country. And then I get to choose the best of the best for this particular mm. audience. I think what makes them stand out, two characteristics come to mind. One is a uh, uh, sincere curiosity about businesses. So our professors, mm. despite the fact that they've been teaching business for as long as they have, uh, remain curious about what's sure. going on. And so they love to be in the classroom with business owners talking about real challenges. And then the second is, I would say, a humility. That is, if you or some partner comes and says, hey, we've got an idea, mm -hmm. our professors are such that they're open to those uh, suggestions about how you might modify a class. And so Humility and curiosity go a long way in terms of selecting the professors sure. and then really setting a tone for the classroom, too. Sure. And let's let's touch upon the fact that these professors that you're picking, 
they're a lot of times international consultants to Indeed. major companies. Indeed. And so once somebody goes through this program, now they have access to that professor for one-on-one -on -one coaching. Talk about that. They're a spider for life. Oh, uh, we I, like to I say. forgot to wear my spider oh, today. that's okay. <laughs> we won't hold it against you. But yeah, that's part of what we try to convey is it's, it's not a one-week program, mm -hmm. right? That, that one week is really an introduction to uh, the University of Richmond and its faculty and all of the other resources. Sure. I would say it's also an introduction really to the alumni of the program mm -hmm. who, who have been so valuable and some of them are coming back to teach, as you know. Um, and so we've, you're walking into this one-week program, but it really sets you up for, for, uh, for life beyond that. And our connections with faculty are a key piece of that. Excellent, excellent. So tell us, my viewers always love stories. Tell us your favorite two success stories. Wow. I'd have to start with Moses Foster. Okay. Uh, Love Moses Foster. Well, you know, he was in the first cohort. Okay. And I, I'm a little bit hesitant to say that this program made any difference because anybody who knows Moses knows he was going to be successful anyway. Sure, right? sure. So when I think about, you know, where he, he and West Cary Group might have been in 2009 and uh, fairly far along, but not to the point that he is today, mm -hmm. I, I would cite Moses as one of our favorite stories. And he now does come back and he actually teaches the marketing mm -hmm. section. So that's an adjustment we made, right? Right. They love him so much and, and his company is so successful. He's now a professor. Yeah, and that's a that's a favorite story. Right. You might recall at the end of this past year, we had one of the participants say, So so how do I get to teach in, in this? <laughs> and it's that'll that'll happen, right. I have no doubt, right. uh, a few years from now. But I think the fact that Moses came in, uh, launched uh, a really next phase of his business, mm. that's part of it, but also that he stayed connected to the program and is now giving his time and expertise to the program. That's another key piece of that. Boy, if, if, I, could, if I could add two more. Okay, okay. Andrea Lyons is one. She oh, was yes. in the second or third cohort. And, and again, I think you know she had a pretty sound business to, to begin with, but as we watch uh, her growth over in the business all, all about presentation, we watch that firm grow. I think we all take great pride. Yes. Again, uh, maybe it was one one hundredth of what helped her grow, mm -hmm. but she did, to, you know, come and spend time with us. In she the program. gives credit to the University of Richmond. I'm Absolutely. thrilled to hear that. And so, so she would be one. I think more recently, though, your friend Maria Kemp, the, the okay. wonderful chef from <laughs> Charlotte. I mean, she's another one that I think you know came through the program and. And really launched, she pivoted her business from just, you know, Beyond Decadence was right. all about desserts. And right. now she's doing all kinds of things. She's doing diversity, equity, and inclusion training. Through banking. banking Through banking, right? right. right. Like, who, who would have thought? <laughs> but I think the, the fact that you pause and think about your business today and your business tomorrow sets up that possibility that you're going to come out of this week with a very different idea about your business and maybe some add-ons, if you will. But watching her uh, pivot has been a whole lot of fun for our faculty. That is awesome. Well, let me tell you my favorite story. Go ahead. My favorite story is a gentleman that came and he had bed sheets for kids in the hospital, yes, right? Yes. And his business, it was, it was not growing the way it should be growing. One of his classmates donated, I think it was like 10 sets or 100 sets of sheets to a hospital. Through that donation, he got some publicity. And then all of a sudden, the trajectory just started. And now he's international with his sheets, right? But it took the largesse of a fellow classmate yeah. to really give him some leverage and that market, that free marketing, right, from that PR just catapulted his business. And that speaks to the power of your classmates, your cohort, right? Because, we see this generosity yes. all the time. Yes. Uh, you know, we've had a number of food products, uh, food mm -hmm. businesses, and, and just as they begin to say, well, you know, we've set up e-commerce so we're able to ship from right. a distance. Not only are we starting to buy that product, but you see all their classmates starting to buy the product and starting to tell others to buy the product. And, and so we've seen this generosity of spirit Absolutely. in almost every cohort that we've had. It's really a, a wonderful part of the program. Absolutely. Outstanding. Well, it has been a pleasure to have My you pleasure. here today, Richard. And, and I'm, I'm excited for the individuals that will be coming into classes in the future. We right? cannot wait to meet them. Can't wait, right? So thank you so much for being here today. My pleasure. So if you are interested in more information on the executive program, please email R. Coughlin at richmond.edu or cvmsdc.org. You can e email us at info at cvmsdc.org and we will get you set up for the program if you are a certified MBE with CVMSDC. Well, that concludes today's episode of Intentionality. Be sure to join me for our next episode and remember that we must always, always remain intentional to gain knowledge, skills, and connections so we can grow and thrive in business together. I am Dominique Simpson-Milton, and I will see you next time. This has been another episode of Intentionality with Dominique, brought to you by the CVMSDC. For more information, please visit cvmsdc.org.